practice prone shavasana with a blanket roll underneath the low belly. So roll up your blanket as you see here. And then come onto your hands and knees and rest your belly down on the blanket roll. And take the blanket roll fairly low in the belly, but the pelvis should be hanging back and over it. So you have to play with the placement of the blanket roll to find a good place in the low belly, definitely below the rib cage. But let the pelvis and the rib cage be on opposite sides of the blanket roll. So the pelvis relaxes on one side of the blanket roll and the rib cage relaxes on the other. And the abdomen recedes to receive the pressure of the blanket roll. Let the belly be soft and receptive here. And let the belly receive the pressure of the blanket roll. You can let your forehead rest on your forearms. Relax the legs and the feet. So you should feel some pressure in your belly here from the blanket roll. And adjust your body so that you can relax here. Adjust the arms and the legs as you need to. If you like, you can open up the arms and turn your head to one side if that works for you. And if you do that, just be sure to switch your head in a few moments. Breathe into your belly here. Breathe into that pressure that you feel in the belly. Inhaling and exhaling here. Let the upper buttocks release back and down away from the lower back. Heavy tailbone here. Soft, receptive abdomen. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. Allow yourself to be supported by the floor and the blanket roll. Smooth, gradual breath. And just observe here, observing each moment. And then come up to hands and knees to come out of the pose. Sit down on your shins and pause. Now we'll practice extended child's pose with two blocks. So have the blocks underneath your hands and come to hands and knees. Take your knees a little wider than hips, big toes are touching and then pull your hips back onto your heels. And with extended arms, start to slide the blocks forward in space and lengthen the belly, the rib cage, the waist. As you stretch the arms even more, lengthen the armpits, connect your hands into the blocks. Externally rotate the upper arms a little bit. And then inhale and lift your trunk up slightly and elongate the front ribs forward to lengthen the abdomen even more. Elongating those side ribs and armpits. Take the upper buttocks back and down. Pull the hips back and down as much as you stretch your spine forwards. And see if you can relax any extraneous contraction or tension. And then inhale back up to hands and knees. And now we'll practice downward facing dog with a chair. So have your sticky mat against the wall and place the back of the chair at the wall. And rest your hands down on the seat of the chair and step your feet back into a down dog position. So we don't want the back to be rounded at all or the pelvis to be tucked. 
Rather, bend your knees and lift your buttocks way up high so that your pelvis will tilt on the femurs. So the buttocks is lifting and let the front of your spine be very long. Stretch through the arms, stretch the elbows, the armpits, pull the outer hips back, pull the inner thighs back, pull the pubic bone back and up behind you and let the head release down and let the chest release towards the toes. Think of the upper spine, the thoracic spine, deepening into the body towards the chest. And then lengthen the trunk. Lengthen the outsides of the trunk and lengthen the inner trunk. Lift the buttocks up. You can keep your knees bent here. That might help you lift the buttocks and pull it way back. And then lean into the chair as you step your feet forward. Now we'll practice Ardha Uttanasana. So have two blocks in front of you at shoulder distance apart. Stand with your feet at hip distance apart. Thigh bones rolling in, thigh bones back. Feet are awake. Lift your spine. And then exhale and bend your knees. Crease at the hips to fold forward and take your hands to the blocks. What you don't want to do is Curl your spine and tuck your pelvis here, but rather bend your knees, lift your buttocks, stretch the bottom front ribs forwards, elongate through the elbows, and then maintaining this position in the pelvis with the buttocks lifting and spreading, see how much you can stretch and lengthen the backs of the legs, see how much you can open the backs of the knees. Stay grounded in the inner feet. Stretch the chest forward because there's a lengthening happening from deep inside the trunk. Breathe here. And then exhale, take your hands down to the floor, bend your knees deeper and release your trunk all the way down, head relaxing and releasing. And then bring your hands to your outer hips, stretch your chest forward, shoulders back, and come all the way up to stand. Now we'll do a variation of Urdhva Hastasana with two blocks and a strap. So place one block between your feet and place one block between your upper inner thighs and then hold on to the strap with your hands at shoulders distance apart and lift the strap up and overhead. Let the thighs internally rotate and the outer thighs squeeze the block. So the outer thighs squeeze the inner thighs which squeeze the block and then lift the low belly up off the pelvis and lift the rib cage up off the abdomen. Lift the back ribs up off of the lower back. Stretch the arms up to the ceiling. Put tension on the strap. Extend the arms and legs fully. Make lots of space and length in your body here. And let the abdomen settle back towards the anterior surface, the front surface of the lumbar spine. So let the front waist move to the back waist. As your arms move back, let the waist move back. Stand right over your arches and lengthen and breathe here. Full extension in the arms and the legs. Create an ascension of the spine from bottom to top, deep inside yourself. Deep breath here. And then lower your arms down. Now we'll practice Ardha Prasarita Padottanasana with a twist in the variation. So have your blocks ready on the highest height. Stand in Tadasana in mountain pose. Take your hands to your hips. Lift the spine from bottom to top and step your feet wide with the heels wider than toes. Internally rotate the thighs, ground the inner feet, pull the thigh bones back. Shoulders back and then stretch the arms out. 
Lift the side ribs and reach the right arm to the right and the left arm to the left. And then hands back to hips. And then crease and fold at the hips, bending the knees so that you can lift the buttocks. Lift the backs of the legs and lift the buttocks up. Bring your hands onto the blocks. And then lift the left hand up towards the ceiling so that you come into a twist. Keep the knees bent, the buttocks lifted, the front of the spine long. Have a back bend feeling in the upper back. And turn the belly and the rib cage. Lift the left arm and left shoulder up. And then exhale and come down. Rest your left hand on the block and lift your right arm up to come into a twist on the other side. Groins reaching back, buttocks lifting, front of the spine lengthening. Stretch the right arm up, stretch the right shoulder up, and turn the belly, turn the rib cage. And then exhale and come down. And then hands to hips and stretch your chest forward and come on up. Now we'll practice a twist balance with the chair. So stand facing the chair seat, have a little space between you and the chair, and then lift the left leg up and place your left foot on the chair seat and the left knee is bent. And make sure that your right thigh isn't sitting forward, but rather pull the right thigh back. And then start to twist your belly and rib cage to the left, so your right hand will come to the outer left knee. Left hand on left hip, and left shoulder is opening. Think of pulling the front of the right thigh back in space so you're standing directly over the right arch, grounding through the right inner foot, and then lengthen up through that right leg all the way up through the anterior spine. Open your left arm so that you can look back at the left hand, wide across the chest, lift it in the low belly, ground it in the feet, And then exhale and release and stand on two feet and we'll switch sides. And now lift your right leg up and place your right foot onto the chair seat. Hands on hips to start. Front of the left thigh pulls back in space. Gather your outer hips towards the midline. And from that foundation start to twist the belly to the right. Pull the right ribs back, left ribs forward, shoulders to the back of the shoulder sockets. Open your right arm out, as you see here. Left hand to the outer right knee to help you twist. Pull the front of the left thigh back. Gather the outer hips in and ascend deep inside your trunk. Find an ascension of the central axis open and relaxed in the back of the throat, lengthening up through the top of the head. And then exhale and release back to center. Now we'll do a seated twist with a chair. So have a seat sideways on your chair and adjust the flesh of your buttocks so that you can really sit on the front half of your sitting bones and have your feet flat. And then twist so that you face the back of the chair. And use your hands on the back of the chair to help you twist a little deeper. You'll find that one hand can push and one hand can pull. And that can help you turn your rib cage around a little more. See if you can allow the heads of the humerus bones to stay back in the shoulder sockets. So there's a feeling that the shoulders are back and the shoulder blades are sliding down from top to bottom. And you still stay long through the inner trunk. And then release the twist. And spin around on the chair so that you can do the other side. Again, adjust the flesh of the buttocks. Pull the flesh of the buttocks back behind the sitting bones. And this way you can maintain the natural curves of the spine as you sit tall, 
So sitting tall comes easily because your bones are organized and you don't stress out your muscles by contriving an upright seat. And then turn and twist towards the back of the chair and use your hands on the back of the chair. And if you practice, you'll find that one hand can push and one hand can pull. And that will very naturally help you deepen your twist. Take your shoulders back, lift the low belly, turn the belly, turn the ribs, turn the collarbones. Breathe here as you're deep in the twist. And then release and come back to center. And spin around on the chair so that you can do the other side. And adjust the flesh of your buttocks so that you can really sit on the front half of your sitting bones and have your feet flat. And then twist so that you face the back of the chair. And use your hands on the back of the chair to help you twist a little deeper. And you'll find that one hand can push and one hand can pull. And that can help you turn your rib cage around a little more. See if you can allow the heads of the humerus bones to stay back in the shoulder sockets. So there's a feeling that the shoulders are back and the shoulder blades are sliding down from top to bottom and you still stay long through the inner trunk. And then release the twist and spin around on the chair so that you can do the other side. Again, adjust the flesh of the buttocks. Pull the flesh of the buttocks back behind the sitting bones. And this way you can maintain the natural curves of the spine as you sit tall. So sitting tall comes easily because your bones are organized and you don't stress out your muscles by contriving an upright seat. And then turn and twist towards the back of the chair and use your hands on the back of the chair and if you practice, you'll find that one hand can push and one hand can pull. And that will very naturally help you deepen your twist. Take your shoulders back, lift the low belly, turn the belly, turn the ribs, turn the collarbones. Breathe here as you're deep in the twist. And then release and come back to center. Now lay down on your back for a variation of belly rolling. Have a block nearby. And then place the block between your knees, knees over hips. Stretch your arms out to the sides. Long extended arms, shoulder blades sliding down your back. And then as you exhale, take your knees over towards your right elbow and they'll hover there. Knees are squeezing the block and focus on the stretch of the inner arms. Lengthen the collarbones horizontally and slide your shoulder blades down your back and slide your belly to the left. And then inhale your knees to the center and exhale your knees over towards the left elbow. Spread wide through your arms. Press the backs of your hands into the floor. Slide your shoulder blades down your back and slide your belly to the right. Be wide in your collarbones here. Stay active in your arms. Inhale to the center. And exhale your knees over towards the right elbow. Inhale knees to the center and exhale your knees over towards the left elbow. Inhale the knees to the center and keep going on your own here.
and then bring your feet back down to the floor and rest. Now we'll practice Supta Parangustasana. So lay down on your back and have a strap nearby and release the flesh of the buttocks away from the lower back. Thighs are parallel, inner thighs and groins are relaxed, pelvis is heavy and relaxed and stretch your arms overhead along the floor to lengthen the trunk, lengthen through the waist, the armpits, the abdomen, lengthen the front of your spine and stretch and extend your elbows. Open the hands and the feet. And then take your strap and place the strap over the right heel. And then start to stretch the left leg along the floor. Internally rotate the left thigh. Lengthen the spine headwards. Let the abdomen be relaxed and long. Elbows wide, shoulder blades sliding down the back. Kick your right heel up to open up the back of the right leg. Internally rotate at the very top of the left thigh and pull the right outer hip away from the right waist. So you can keep your right knee bent a little bit. That's fine. Just kick your right heel up so that you're feeling an elongation of the back of the right leg. Imagine the back of the right knee spreading and opening and lengthening. Breathe into the sensations here. Here you can imprint a long spine and an open chest even while you're stretching your hamstrings. And then bend your right knee, bend your left knee, both feet flat. Stretch your arms overhead, neutralize and lengthen the trunk, relaxed in the pelvis area. And then lasso the strap over your left heel and kick your left heel up towards the ceiling. Pull your left outer hip away from the left waist and internally rotate the right thigh as you start to stretch your right leg long. Ground the right thigh bone down. Be long in both sides of your belly. Elbows wide, shoulders moving down towards the sticky mat. Kick the left heel up to spread open the back of the left knee. So the knee can stay bent, but energetically lengthen the left leg. Rolling the right thigh in, pulling the left outer hip away from the left waist, organizing the tissue and the bones and the muscles here as you stretch, creating order and length. And then bend both knees, feet flat, reach your arms up overhead. Parallel legs, relaxed in the groins. And now we'll practice Supta Parangustasana 4. So have your strap nearby, extend your arms, extend your legs, roll the thighs inwards a little bit, ground the thighs. And then keep that sense of length in your trunk as you lasso the right heel. Extend the right leg all the way up to the ceiling and extend the left leg along the floor, long in the low belly, outer right hip moves away from the right waist. You can have a bent right knee here if that's better for you. Long spine. And then grab onto the strap with the left hand only and take your right hand onto the outer right thigh hip area and see if you can pull that outer right thigh and hip area away from the right waist and keep that happening as you extend the right arm out to the right and let the right leg move over to the left just about a foot. So you're starting to cross the leg over towards the left side, keeping extended in that right knee. 
keeping long in the right waist. And then come back to center and we'll switch sides. Now lassoing the left heel, reach the left leg up, again bending the knee if that's better for you. And extend the right leg long, profound internal rotation at the very top of that right thigh to keep the groin relaxed. Long belly, long in the front of the spine, elbows wide, shoulder blades sliding down the back. And then grab onto the strap very close to the foot with the right hand only. And the left hand will come to the outer left hip and thigh, encouraging that outer left hip to move away from the left waist, staying long in the left waist. And extend your left arm out to the left as you pull the leg over to the right side, just about a foot. Stay open in the backs of the knees. Pulling that leg across the body, but not too much. So the sacrum should stay grounded. And then come back to center. And then release, bending both knees, feet flat. Reach your arms overhead and then stretch both your legs out, internally rotating at the tops of the thighs, lengthening through the arms, stretching the knees and the elbows. Now we'll do a version of supported fish with a bolster and two blankets. So please set up as you see here. The bolster is horizontal and then you have two folded blankets and that will be for your head support. So lay back over the bolster so the bolster is supporting your rib cage. It's not under the lumbar spine. Rather, it's under the thoracic spine and then pull the flesh of the buttocks away from the lower back. And the shoulders will relax into the gap between the bolster and the folded blankets and the head will rest on the folded blankets and start to extend and relax the legs. Let the arms relax right out to the sides. Let the abdomen settle let the shoulders relax here. See if the shoulders can really let go because of all of this support that's here. Let the head and neck relax because they're supported by the blankets. Let the upper torso relax as it's supported by the bolster. Let gravity have an effect on the shoulders, releasing and relaxing. Slow down your exhalations here. Stay very present in this moment inside yourself. Observing whatever arises. Smooth inhalation. Smooth exhalation. And then start to come out of the pose by curling onto your right side. We'll complete this practice with chair shavasana. Put the chair on your sticky mat and sit down close to the front of the chair and then swing your legs up onto the chair and lay down. And please adjust the flesh of your buttocks to pull the flesh of your buttocks away from your low back. And then adjust the shoulders so your shoulder blades are settled nicely down your back and let the arms relax. Let the legs be supported by the chair let the lower back be supported by the floor and let your whole body relax and release down. 
Smooth and steady your breathing here. <laughs> 